After Saturday's false missile scare, many of us have started thinking about creating a plan in the event of a real attack. But how can your pets fit into that plan? Animal behaviorist Wendy Ma joins us this morning with advice. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so a lot of people, you know, panicked on Saturday, not knowing what to do, even for their families. How would, if this did happen, how would you fit your pet into that plan? Well, for a lot of people, their pets are their family, too, mm -hmm. nowadays. Um, what happened this weekend, 12 minutes, we don't have a whole lot of time to get things together like a hurricane. We should have that uh, disaster kit ready and packed, but this is more for hunkering down at home. And people were doing, you know, getting into their bathrooms and things. So have a crate for each one of your pets, and you can use your vertical space, not just, you know, horizontal floor space. Um, just a, a water dish for each one, mm -hmm. uh, water for them. Uh, you're going to be at home, so after those first 24, 48 hours when they say it's okay to now come out a little bit more, now you have your house. Have um, sanitation, because if it is <laughs> clear fallout, we don't want to go outside. Right. So where are your pets going to go? Even if they're yard trained, you need to have something for them to use while they're inside. Have food. Um, try to conserve space, maybe food that both you and your pet can use. Oh, These are sardines. That's a good idea you know, multi-purpose. Mm -hmm. um, if you are doing canned, remember, even though you have a can opener in the kitchen, that might not be where you are in your house, so make sure you have your can opener. Um, leashes for both cleaning uh, supplies in case, because you're in a very confined area, you want to keep that sanitation. Right. And people really should think about um, rotating their dog's food. You know, don't just pack it away for six months or whatever because dog's food does go rancid. Mm -hmm. um, canned food will last longer. Okay, so that probably canned food would be the better option than to have in your kit that you have set away. But also, if you do have the dry food, just make sure you want to always have this kit separate, but just be going through and occasionally, maybe once or twice a year, so be I going through and switching out the switching food. Switching it out. Okay. And all of this fit into both of these kennels for my dogs, and there's plenty more space. And so all I have to do is now find space in, say, my closet mm -hmm. where we might go and hide, um, <laughs> take cover, uh, and it's all there. Because right. it's only 12 minutes. You can't collect everything. So if all of this is here for a couple of days, you don't have to worry about that. So many of my clients were like, I, I had all these things, but they were in different parts of the house, and I didn't know what to do. And then when I saw the dogs that day, the dogs were just freaked out yeah. because of the emotions that their owners were having. So that's the other thing. Many people say, well, I don't want to crate train my dog. This is a good reason why. Mm -hmm. Even if on a daily basis your dog is not going to go in a crate, that they um, accept being in a crate. Mm -hmm. Because if they're content in here, that's one less thing you're stressed about under a very stressful situation. Yeah, and in a situation like that, that could be your best option, that they would have to be in a crate. And you were talking a little bit about how the pets were scared. Can you talk about that? Because not only do people get scared, but the pets would be really frightened in that situation as well. Right, because they're feeding off of the emotion, the energy that of the people around them. So even friendly dogs, if you were going to help your neighbor, you know, be careful about how you approach them because mm -hmm. they're, they may be uh, very stressed and so they may snap mm -hmm. at people that they know but are not quote unquote part of their family. So right. approach dogs carefully, cats too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because again, stressful situations affect not only humans, and a lot of people don't even think about that. Um, so, okay, so the main things then would be kind of to stay calm around them. Is there a way that you could kind of improve the situation for your pets? Um, giving them a safe place to go. Mm -hmm. The dogs are den animals. So a lot of people who don't want to crate train their dogs, it's because of that name, crate. It's, it's horrid. But if, you know, they had their own little rooms, and people saw it that way, and the and they're comfortable going in there, then the dogs, the cats, they'll calm down because they know they're in a nice, safe place. Right. That in the past has always been about warm and fuzzy stuff. So that's one less, again, one less stress that the owners have to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, and the pets just go along on their day. Oh, this is nice. Yeah, okay. and that I'm makes my sense. Room. That yeah. makes sense, giving them a comfort spot. So again, have one, have an extra crate on the side if you have room for the storage, or even if you don't, make the room, because in a situation like this, you'd want to grab and go. And to have all of this just in one crate, be able to grab your pet, that's vital. Right. All of this 
fit in here. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention is if this does happen, we're not going to have AC. Right. So many people forget, and I put in a little ah. cooling pad here to keep your dogs cool because they run at a much higher temperature than we do. So it doesn't take much to overheat them. Makes sense. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for all these awesome tips, Wendy. We're going to have all this information and post this whole link and all of Wendy's tips on our website, k 12com Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. All right.